going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and we're back in the Big Dog Podcast. I got the Mrs. Katie Yergin in the studio today. What's up, Katie? Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what was it last time? A. Hey. Hey. Yeah, just A. Hey. <laughs> just A. Hey. Different got, when I had mimosas in front of me. That's true. Sorry. There's, well, you got coffee. Yes, Feeling caffeinated. Hey. 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 Jay Mac. What up? What up? How's it going, buddy? I'm existing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. What's existing look like, Jonathan? You were sick. Yeah. You got that. Um, you got the new flu. Yeah, I went. You worked through that. Went about six rounds with it. Okay. Came out on top. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Feeling strong. Six rounds. No. Six, six rounds fighting with COVID. You've had it six times? No. Never. Six days. Oh. It's good, Jonathan. The joke okay. is dead. Yeah. The joke is yeah. dead. Yeah. Sometimes she, she butchered it. Really dislike myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, Katie. You're fine. You're fine. Just just play along. Sorry, I never had COVID, so like I don't really know. Yeah. So <laughs> this chick, I mean, everybody around her has. Um, you honestly, they should be drawing your blood. That's who mm. they should be running tests on. I have had a lot of direct exposure. However, I come back to, and you and I have discussed this, and I think it's fair for the podcast. And if you want me to stop, just tell me that I won't go too deep. But like you're kind of a dumpster fire. Like <laughs> as far as like you will, you will eat things. I firmly believe I'll cut you off and say this. Okay. I firmly believe that there is value in expired foods being eaten. No, okay. <laughs> I don't, I'm not really big in expired foods. So that kind of freaks me out. I know. However, germs, I'm not a germaphobe. You are not. And I think that there's big value in that. Like the moms, I mean, no offense. I would never judge a mother and what they do, but I will never be it, this mother. You should. Well, I just, I won't, <laughs> I'll never be this mother where I would pick up, the pacifier and sanitize it before I give it back to my kid. That sucker's going right back in its mouth. <laughs> hey. Start them young and build up their immune system. Yeah. So if I drop like this morning in my kitchen, I dropped my whole container of blueberries. Guess what happened there? Loaded them up, brought them to work. Right back into my container and they're going to be eating at lunch. <laughs> at least that's her floor. Yeah. yeah. It's her house. True. I mean, my husband's a germaphobe, so I can at least semi You two it. trip me out like very different people. Yeah. Kind of like Devin and I, very different people. Mm -hmm. Y'all managed to make it work out. Um, but very different personalities very different. and stuff. We're still figuring it out. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, living in a tiny apartment right now. Is <laughs> June is twenty years for Devin and I. And we're still figuring it out. That's fair. So, so back to your original statement yes, that you're anyway, getting at. You were just solid. Like you were strong, and because I think I agree I have with a good you. Immune system. You do have a great immune system, and it's because you subject it to such violence. <laughs> um, I mean, I just and she's always, always trying something new. She saw or has seen and ordered it, and it's like, yeah. Josh, do you want to try this? you know, dehydrated beef stick or beef flake or chip or something. It's kind of like a cracker. This is the most recent one, Jonathan. I was like, hell yeah, beef. I'm going to try it. No, look, it may have it come from the cow. It was a dehydrated ribeye. This is what it was. Okay, we'll call it for the podcast a dehydrated ribeye. Let me tell you what they actually packaged. It came from the cow, but it came straight out the cow's ass, and it was in a field in the sun, <laughs> and it dried out, and they took the flakes of a cow it's patty. It's no threw different it in a bag. than jerky. And so, <laughs> it's just less fat and more protein. <laughs> she was different than jerky. It was crunchier. <laughs> oh God, it was so it's bad. Like a chip. Honestly, I felt like I was playing like catch with frisbee or something at the beach, and I tripped, which one does at the beach? You trip and you fall in the sand, but your mouth is open, and now your mouth is full of dirt and sand. Maybe you just got a bad one. It turned to dust as soon as you crunched it up. No. It's like freaking the chicken uh, one Avengers. Is really crunchy. The dude snaps his fingers, everybody turns to dust. That's what happened in my mouth with the, the uh, chicken cow one's patty. really crunchy. I, I can't like, do it. I yeah. like that one. I don't take food or snack recommendations from anybody. What I like is what I like. That's fair, man. That's fair. I think my son will be that way the rest of his life. Cheeseburgers. Plain cheeseburgers. Bacon cheeseburger. Bacon cheeseburger. Yes, I'm sorry. No matter where we go, Mexican restaurant. Uh, yeah, the bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend that ordered uh, hamburgers like everywhere like that. Yeah. And we sat down at IHOP like one evening and he ordered like the deluxe hamburger from IHOP. No, I can't do it. Yeah, we're not IHOP is risky. We're not yes. friends Except maybe anymore. the pancakes. <laughs> what did we have? So what was it start of this year or was it? No, it was December. No, December, yeah. It was December. We just were like, you know what? Oh, I think it was, um, what do we call it? Spirit Week. Yeah, and so the last week it was before the last Christmas. week before Christmas, some people were traveling and taking time. We wore PJs to the office. Yeah, pajamas every day. Some Breakfast people more every than day. others. Lunch every day. Yeah, and it the first great. day I sent out a little thing. I said, guys, add your order. We're gonna have uh, what was it? Food Fresh Market. No food crap. No, uh, what's that place called? Fresh Market. No, no. that's a grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> 
Fuck, What's that place that I hate, but now I like? I know. Uh, First Watch. First Watch. So First Watch said, hey, we can have DoorDash deliver. So we put in our order. Everybody's so excited. Everyone's ordering delicious things. Put in the order. Order is accepted. And then order was declined. And so we had to scramble. We're trying to find Not breakfast. Because the card was declined. Yeah, the order was declined because they're just like, we, we're not doing it. We don't we, want to deliver it to you. Yeah. Our office is a little out of the way, so whatever. Yeah. Anyway, we end up changing, and to we did IHOP. IHOP. And I hadn't had IHOP in probably five or six years, and I don't think it'll be less than five or six years if 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 I ever chose to do that again. Yeah, It was not a great experience. No. Well, I feel like it was honestly a really dumb decision because... Ouch. Yeah, I'm I was sorry. trying to be kind. I know, but IHOP, it, when it's fresh out of the kitchen onto your table, is like... Mm. But then, like, delivery oh, on yeah. top of that. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's mm, whether yeah. you, you <laughs> questionable yeah. in I would, the house. I would rather get Waffle House delivered at that point. I Waffle House, it's right. Disagree. I don't. I, Waffle House is good. Waffle House is good. Yeah, but you got to be there watching people fight. And yeah, Waffle House is an it's experience. It's all about the experience, yeah. Waffle House, I would go as far to say Waffle House is the equivalent of Ruth's Chris, but with breakfast. As far as the experience goes, like you go to Ruth's Chris for a real nice dinner, steak dinner and the experience and everything that comes with it. I think. I think Waffle you're a House, off on your experiences. I, was no, say- I think Waffle House creates an equal experience, not as far as luxury, but as far as uh, value taken from it. Entertainment. You never are bored going into Waffle no, House. No, no, no. I agree. Wa- right. You're never bored. You can get bored at Ruth's Chris. Like. Uh, I'm never bored. Waffle of House course. is like the people of Walmart is like the McDonald's frosty machine or whatever the heck it is. McFlurry <laughs> machine is broken down and all that drama. Nowhere in that uh, triangle I, fits. See, to me, it's a great experience. And so I'm saying experience and experience. I would put it at level like from what I enjoy. I would enjoy a Waffle House experience equal to a Ruth's Chris experience. I'm not saying the food is equitable. I'm saying the experience entertainment and value, entertainment value yes. is the same because I'm highly entertained. The, it's it's dud ass waiters typically at Ruth's Chris and like Morton's and stuff like that. Waiters and waitresses aren't typically yeah, great, um, but the food, the way it comes out and everything, that's a good experience. So we got our little place, you know, Schlesinger's got Dee Dee. That is a start to finish amazing experience. No one's better than Dee Dee. No one's. No Dee Dee came in the other night, Jonathan. Dee Dee saw we had a reservation. She wasn't even working. She came in just for us. How dope is that? Then she gets in there and she finds out we're not drinking and we're not doing <laughs> our normal deal. Our check significantly yeah. cut down for the normal. Yeah, no desserts, funny. no appetizers, no alcohol. I feel like uh, I should do a note for the listener like, hey, guys, are you too broke for Ruth Chris? Yeah. Have you ever been to Ruby Tuesdays? I'm here for <laughs> you. <laughs> Honestly, Ruby Tuesday salad bar used to be pretty good. Yeah. Now it's all E. coli. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you can't do anything. I thought they shut anyway. down. Yeah, well, the one around here is gone. So, but anyway, Jonathan, we're glad you're feeling stronger. We're glad you beat it, that you're not a statistic. And um, glad that you're back in, in here with us. The kids are just getting over it. Kiki's back at school. Logan goes back tomorrow. Devin's been running around the block today. Make sure his lungs are right. And boom, signs out. That's her test. 20 degrees. Let's do a couple laps. The kids don't fall out. She sends them to school the next crazy. day. I, I have asthma. <laughs> I'll be in the house. <laughs> How do you rap with asthma? Uh, I sit still and don't really get real expressive on stage. It's oh, a, I feel you're very expressive on stage. It's a much greater battle. Yeah. I'm still trying to like work out, stop vaping and do all the stuff to mm. be able to breathe. But yeah, it's a constant battle. How's that asthma, asthma working out with the vaping? I mean, we coexist. <laughs> <laughs> he said trying. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Well, all right, good. So, Katie, look, I gave you a, a couple weeks' notice. You know this has been on the schedule for us to get in here and chat today. Um, by a couple weeks, I grabbed her an hour ago and said, hey, jump in with me today. We're going to chat about a couple things. I thought it would be really fun to um, talk about something that used to bother me um, but doesn't bother me anymore. Kind of that mindset is shifted. Sorry. Good job, Peyton. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, y'all, bo- y'all like, both did it. I'm yeah, over we here. We both got yeah. Oh, you felt left out. Yeah, Money with, my, with my Sorry. naked oh. wrist. Just. <laughs> Apple Watch problems. No, get Jonathan Apple Watch. <laughs> so um, it, it's been interesting. I was thinking about it, and I 
did a little thing on I posted something on Instagram earlier today about it. Um, like imitation. Like we've had a lot of people come and go over the last like year, year and a half, you know, from the team. And it was so funny to me. And like years ago, it used to really bother me. I'm like, what the hell? Like, you know, like somebody might get fired or somebody would like would leave, you know, or whatever. And, you know, and then they they go and and start um, let's say dog training business. All right. And um and it's crazy. The 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 model is very similar to or if not exact replica of of what we do. And people tend to copy what works, right? So like of course you're gonna do that. I would do the same the same damn thing. Um and there's tons of dogs out there and you know everybody can thrive and and do really, really well. Um but it, the thing that and this happens to a lot of business owners. I talk to people, Apex and stuff like that, and they they get worried about people leaving. They get scared to teach people and develop them because they're afraid they're going to leave. And I'm like, I'm never afraid anybody's going to leave. I feel like if no matter what your industry is, if you're an organization, you add value. Um, you know, people know that they're valued. You're very clear on what your kind of values are and policies and procedures. And people that want to be a part of that are going to be a part of that people that don't agree core values wise or mission or policies and procedures they're they're not whether it's going to be their choice to not be a part of it or someone else's like you can't pause growth because of the fear of someone taking what you do and leaving you know what i mean like like that's crazy like you're you're, you're kind of sabotaging yourself right yeah i mean it makes sense like an nfl team doesn't draft a player saying oh we should be scared to show him our playbook because after four years his contract's up and he could leave you know you focus on the growth and give him in the best that, coaching in that moment private. right yeah. For those four years and if it doesn't work out after that you let him go yeah and hopefully it's something where all the numbers jive and they can keep that athlete on the team and and continue to develop and hopefully they've overperformed on their contract right because early on contracts are kind of set as far as what like rookies can get and stuff yep. and you hope that every one of these guys out per over performs their contract right and that's actually i love that you mentioned that because i think that's a big part of of staffing like if you're an employee you know or you work contractor for somebody don't play to your contract if anything you know you want to over deliver you know, on your contract and kind of create like, Hey, I'm, I'm valuable. I, I deserve more. Why do you deserve more? Right. You got, if you're just playing to the initial contract or underperforming, you know, to that initial contract, why would you ever be in a position to, you know, have an opportunity for more? And a lot of people, um, you know, I've seen who transition off of a team and try to do solo is they have this mindset of I deserve, I deserve more. And so my way of getting more is I'm going to take exactly what I've been taught and just do it, you know, for myself. Here's the problem when your business model is, and I want to get your thoughts on this, Katie and Jonathan, feel free to chime in as well. Um, when your business model is imitation of someone else's business or personal life, whether it's personal or business. If your model is complete imitation, you'll never win because you are mimicking. Like I'll use myself as an example. If you're imitating what we do and going out and doing that, and you think that, you will compete, beat, whatever. It'll never happen because who you're imitating was me or us a month ago because we're always moving forward. You know, who, who I was yesterday, we're already 10 steps ahead of that today. So if you're always mimicking, you're always behind. And so for me, I really feel like the, the message is if – you're thinking about being unsettled at a place where you're at and transitioning out. What makes you unique and what makes you special and put that energy in that don't put, don't waste a second of time trying to mimic and imitate someplace that you view failure came about in your life. 
right? You'll be far more successful if you dial in and focus on what makes you unique, why you're different, because then you're not, because this isn't a competition, right? There's never a competition. I don't care what the industry is. The only competition is, is you and who you were the day before. That's it. That's it. Nobody else matters. If you're worried about other people or you're worried about imitating, you, you constantly lose. You constantly fall behind. Like, does that, does that make sense? Yeah. What do you think about that, Katie? I mean, it's definitely a heavy loaded question. Um, I think about what you say about off leash and, um, you know, how Nick has done things and whatnot. You don't say you had the, the reign to do it however you wanted to do it. Would you do it exactly how he did it? No, probably not. There would be some differences. Sure. And, but what you always say is he's proven the way that he does it, it works and it's successful. So why would you do differently? However, Correct. you bought into the company, your franchise. Right. Yes. <laughs> your, yes. So you are buying into everything he does and yes. teaches and, you know, provides for the individual franchises and things like that. Yeah. So I agree to the flip side of that is there's a right way to go about things, but like buying into the company of sure. what you believe in. Yes. And also execute in that sense, but also you see what he could do. You easily could go and do exactly what you do on your own. But I think that there's a value yeah. in the bigger picture. And sure. I think that's what a lot of people do don't realize is yes like they could separate and do their own thing and some people do it in such a genuine and great way mm -hmm. 100%. um who just simply want more and do see differences or values or whatever yep. that they want to do their way and those people i totally respect yeah but the people who do exactly and we got somebody going through that transition right now that we're encouraging and working with and they're transitioning off the team and you know we've had great conversations over the last couple months and they do. They see training differently than we see it. And that's and perfectly okay. Yeah, 100%. There's a million ways to do it. And and that's, I mean, I encouraged them and, and talked about how we'd like to see them on the team and, and growing within the organization. But at the end of the day, I'm never going to be upset somebody makes that decision to 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 bounce because or hold somebody back from yeah or hold somebody back who feels that drive and that motivation um but i'm also never going to sugarcoat it for them about what it is and yeah. i think a lot of people skip um <laughs> they 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 see us as example in year eight and they don't understand what day one through year eight took to look like year eight. And that was going to be my next point is people right. just wanted to do their own thing, but it's an exact replication of what yes. we do. But then they separate themselves, put their name on it and roll with it. And, yeah. and yeah, I think it's, there's a massive disconnect on the reality of the situation there. Yeah. Well, like, I, th I think that what happens is people want to imitate something that works. And rather than imitating it to the fullest, like an exact replication, they imitate what works for them, right. like what they're comfortable with doing. Yeah, the problem is, though, you will not get the same end result. Exactly. Because the ingredients that got whatever the organization is to the point that it's at, that you're attempting to mimic, if you only pull two main things out of the 384 ingredients, and that's what you think is going to get you to that place you want to be, it don't work that way. Yeah. It, it's impossible. And, then, and that's why we see heavily more times than not, and this is across all industries, when people make this transition, it's typically 90 days, you know, maybe six months if someone has a little bit of fiscal responsibility before they pull the trigger and they're working for somebody else. You know, and it's, and that's where for me, it was just like, man, I could care less somebody bounces and, and what they do, particularly if we remove somebody from our team, right? I don't have a care in the world as far as what they do and, and go and do. I chose for them not to be here anymore. So what they do doesn't impact us at all. I, I don't, I guess I don't really deserve to have an opinion in it either way as far as what they do, but particularly if we let them go, I surely don't worry about it. Um, but the the success rate is already so low. 
I just want people to hear this. And it's like, if you don't find what it is that differentiates yourself, success is impossible. It's damn near impossible anyway. It is. And that's why I feel like when people are bold enough to take that step and do it, I do have a lot of respect for it. Well, that was going to be my point. Because it takes a pair. (laughs) Of everything, right. Of everything I said, my point in that would be if you do choose to do it, separate yourselves and do it your own, on your own, do it your own way. Like, what makes you unique? What makes you believe in your concept? What makes you passionate about maybe the changes, which there should be if yeah. you're any company, you decide, you, you know, to part ways with their help. Maybe it's not even, you know, you're leaving the company that you're at because you want to take a, a leap of faith in something you've always wanted to do. And it's yeah. something completely separate than your previous job. Yeah. Um, but a lot of markets are saturated markets and no matter what you, you have to differentiate what yeah. makes you different than the others and di- directly copying somebody else's business model isn't necessarily that is it a safe place sure but you're taking a risk why would you take a risk and play it safe yeah and i don't know and honestly i see it as the opposite of i don't see it as safe at all no safe for the person not safe for the success of their business right but if i'm that person i don't see it as safe for them you know i'm like holy crap so if i'm i don't know um what's if if I'm, I don't know. Okay, so, so if I'm I'm Ford, right, and I sell F one fifties, and my F one fifty for however many years, I mean it's decades. The F one fifty is the number one selling truck in America, maybe the world, like for decades, right? And then it's like, I'm gonna make a truck. Looks like, drives like, sounds like, feels like, it's the F one fifty, but. I can deliver it to you next week because I've got all the chips and it's a third of the price. Shit ain't the same. It ain't the same. And if you're saying it's all the same, but then you look at Ford and when you look at Ford, you see a million articles and reviews and tests of the vehicle and all of these things, you know, when you buy an F-150, you know exactly what you're going to get. And the experience that you get, there is no like, oh, I, I don't know. I picked up one on Saturday. First time I drove it was off the lot home. Didn't even drive it. Didn't even drive it. Went and bought it. Drove it home. Is it like you want to drive it? I said nah. The F one fifty. I I knew what the truck was. Now I also have a relationship with the dealer. The manager drove it. I have a relationship with them. I trust them. He told me it's the cleanest you'll find on the market. And sure as shit, as I'm driving it home three hours, it's like a brand new truck, several years old, miles. I mean, it's a nice truck. I knew what I was going to get. Someone's telling me they got the same thing, but nothing else is in alignment. A consumer, a wise consumer, they're not going to see those things the same way. Because it does. it's not in alignment. Because if you're the same, why can't I get it right away? Why is it a third of the cost if it's the same? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. And everybody gets got with stuff like that. You'll be scrolling Instagram. Something pops up. Oh, tell me about it. Remember what I told you? Yeah. I bought myself a Shore mic, and right. I was like, Josh, you won't believe it. I just found a deal. These Shore mics that we got for $350 I found on the internet, $100 a mic. You'll never, never believe it. 20 minutes later, I text Josh. Some Chinese company got me. Yeah, don't buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. You know what I mean, though? And, and it's like, you. I don't think there is success there because peep, a, a, a smart consumer is going to question that. Is going to take that into consideration. Well, and I think, too, to speak specifically about our company, there's a difference between a mom and pop shop that's phenomenal and a chain that's also phenomenal. 100%. And then there's also a mom and pop shop that sucks and a chain that sucks. Yeah. So it it really, it's hard to compare between the two. You just have to find the right one. And hundred percent eight times out of 10, I won't even say nine. I would say eight times out of 10, the one that has overwhelmingly 
feedback. I mean, compared to the wedding industry, I just planned a wedding, right? Yeah, sure. And then replanned it again. <laughs> and, um, you know, lots of things. I'm not going with the the company that has a ton of DJs, for instance, right? A ton of DJs that they contract out or whatever. And they have three-star reviews. Some of those DJs have awesome reviews. Awesome. Some of those DJs have awful reviews. It makes the company look bad. I'm not going to yeah. go with them. I'd rather go with a single DJ, does his own thing, hustles hard, and created this system, this process, and that speaks for that. But another vendor I'm going with is that company that has a ton of contracted right. you know, people. And overwhelmingly, every single one of them are extremely positive reviews, feedbacks, videos, whatever. Like I watch all that stuff. I look at all that stuff when I'm picking someone. So to me, it's like when I see a business that has so many people with hands in the pot and then all the hands in the pot and the company all have incredible feedback. Yeah. That's where it's like, that's gold. Yep. Like you have, it is so hard to grow because obviously, and especially with the last two years, growing, providing opportunities for employment and promotions and just whatever is very, really hard to come by in a lot of industries. So to not only grow, but you're also continuing to grow and, and do it in a manner that keeps your experience or your reviews or the people who buy or come to you for whatever it is yeah. positive, that's where it's really hard. And that's where a lot of those smaller people or people who take leave that company and go to their own, th their own thing right. and think that that's what they're going to get out of it. Cause it's yeah. just so different. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny with us and I've said this on the show before and in conversations with people is that like one of my big goals is I want to be the worst trainer we have in our organization. Like the day I'm the worst trainer that we have is going to be so exciting to me. Um, and I'm, I'm an okay dog trainer. Like I do all right with a dog or two, like, <laughs> You know, I, I don't want to be the worst one on the team because that sets the bar low. I want to be the worst one on our team because that's how high of a standard, you know, that we, we carry. And I look at, like with us, across all of our locations, but particularly here in, in Virginia, you know, as we approach just on Google, like 800 reviews, which is mind-blowing to me, um, that every time one of those come through, I take so much pride in what we're doing because that is playing towards the ultimate goal. Right. And like, even and we, so those reviews, you know, like I, I have a few thoughts on reviews yeah. too, because a lot of people can look at them. Well, everybody leaves reviews or you could ask for a review. And no, I think these are things that people say, like, sure. Yes. I, I'll ask you for a review, whatever to compare just something recent with me, the wedding industry. Yeah. I'm the type of person that if I had a bad experience, I won't leave a review. I'll talk to that person. My DJ, for instance, I emailed him oh, yeah, and tried to an clarify yeah. some, some stuff. I'll never leave a negative review on his stuff. However, the positive experience I have, I will for sure leave a positive review. And I know I'm not the only one that does that. There are tons of people that get so hyped up on leaving negative reviews. Yep. But I think ultimately, no matter what review, whether it's negative or positive, typically honest mm -hmm. and it's their experience now there's always the crazy people in the world that last night <laughs> that just are like <laughs> shit popped up five years later in 2017 it's so oh, honest though I'm she's like, right like, we do well, use e-callers like, and she was offended what? by that You're right and the, the but most the best thing about that review i'm sorry finish your point and then i gotta talk about that review because it basically i, I say, still don't know just, how to respond to it i know reviews <laughs> i just feel like majority of the time reviews are honest whether you ask for it what you know like yes. hey how was your experience? You get those emails all yeah. the time for anything. I agree. The majority are honest, good or bad. Good or bad. They're honest. And majority, not all, not all. You get the crazies. And then you easily can see that they're crazy by clicking their Google yes. review profile. And it's like right. the craziest right. reviews out there. Yeah. But to me, I'm like, one, I appreciate the hustle. You're proud of your work if you're willing to ask for that review. If you half-ass your work and you ask for that review, you better expect that you get a half-ass, a three-star out of five-star right. review. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Be proud of your work and then get the good feedback for it. Yep. Like get the backpack, get the hype up, like yeah. whatever. Same with like we do after video. So that's just my point. Like I feel like reviews are also like a touchy subject for a lot of places where it's like, well, they have all these reviews because they have all these trainers and whatever. Like 
Yeah, and isn't they that consistency and, phenomenal? And that's like, that's what I'm it's saying. It's crazy how things work out. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's really weird. Cons- go for the consistent, honest yeah. feedback. Yeah. Like we're not holding a gun to somebody's head. Give me a five Give star. Give me a five star right, right now, like, Linda. This is what you're gonna say. Hey, like, Linda. I hope your dog is doing really, really well since you've been home. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you need anything. Right. Also, if you feel led to share your experience, yeah. I'd love for you to listen do so up. On if this you're lane. another training company, listen. This is fire she's spitting, and this will help you. I'm just saying, like any industry. I'd love really. for you to leave your experience. Yeah. We're not asking, hey, give me a five star review. <laughs> right. No, yeah. share your experience because we know all we have to say is share yeah. your experience. And we talk about that with trainers on our team. You know, a lot of our trainers are very comfortable asking. Um, you know, for that feedback, then some trainers aren't. And I was like, guys, like you're doing a phenomenal job. I just said this to the team the other day. You guys are doing a ph- phenomenal job. If you're not, if me telling you that isn't building confidence in you enough to to ask that client, one, how's it going, and two, you know, please share your experience honestly with us. You know, on Google, Facebook, whatever. Um. You know, you need to ask and let the clients tell you that because that if, if I'm not building confidence in you by talking to you about it, let the clients do it for you because you've done the work and you're doing it at a high level and doing it well. Right. You should be acknowledged for that. And that and the vast majority of our team across the country gets great reviews um, and ask for them. And it, it's constant like a dog goes home. Boom. Here's a review. And I think, I just think there's so much value in asking to share your experience yep, versus, hey, I don't get paid unless I get a review. Yeah. Like, no, that's shady and that's dirty and that's not the reality. The car industry is one of those where it's like, hey, look, and I've been told leaving dealerships before and, and not not my buddies at CMA or, or in Tysing or in Hampton, but, you know, it's like, hey make sure you do a five star. Cause if not, you know, I get dinged yes. and all this stuff. I was like, huh? I tried to negotiate a checkered flag and they gave me this whole spiel on how they don't negotiate. I'm like, Oh, well, I mean, this is the first car I bought. I don't know. I just always thought you could negotiate yeah. your car prices. <laughs> yeah, so I no, did that. He gives tough. me this spiel. He's like, no, what actually we, we negotiate is our, is our five-star reviews. And I'm like, so I can't negotiate prices. <laughs> well, you're, you're four star. Don't put money in my pocket. I'll That's what I'm that. saying. <laughs> but but you can't negotiate your experience for a five-star review. I was like, I, okay, I get that. Like, if you're if you're really helpful and great, like, yeah, I'm going right. to give you a great review. But no. not because I asked for a discount. As soon as I'm told <laughs> that, as soon as I'm told, don't, like, I can't get less than a four or less than a five. So is there anything that I can do that would make this a five-star for you? What's that trending thing right now? Red flag. Before we, before we, you know, wrap up. And I'm like, oh, well, you won't, I won't right. leave a review at all. Yeah. Cause I just, I think that's just dirty. Like give, give me the opportunity. I appreciate the part where it's like, Hey, you know, and what it is with these bigger companies, I guarantee you it's something like Nissan or Ford or GM. They've rolled down from some dumbass sitting in an office somewhere. It's like, you know what we should do? We should make sure that everybody says it this way. Cause that's what, that's what happens. You know, it, it gets rolled down from somebody who actually doesn't do the job. And now it's telling the person who is doing the job how they're supposed to get the the reviews and the feedback. Because it's such a weird thing to be said. It's a yeah. fine line. It's of, an uncomfortable way to ask for it. And we've had those conversations because we've done in, incentives. Like, And I appreciate we do this because it oh, pushes yeah. trainers outside their comfort zone. It's like, hey, whoever gets the most reviews in the month of June yeah, or whatever, whatever, paired with great videos, just what I, like, I don't know, whatever yeah. it, it is. But it's a paired with coaching of guys, how are you asking for your yeah. review? Like, yeah. how are you, there's no, I just want to put the emphasis on there's no business that is out there doing business. that does not ask for a review. It's the, about the ask. Yeah. I don't remember who it was, but years ago, um, we had a trainer and I, I remember lighting them up, but I don't remember who it was exactly. I, I'm starting to think I do remember, but I won't drop any names. They're not with us anymore, but they were telling people, when they picked up the dog, hey, if I don't get a review, Josh doesn't pay me. <laughs> I was like, yo, that's a f- straight up lie. You're making me look like an asshole. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, please don't yeah, don't You're, say that. It's not the reality. Don't no, be a it, loser and like it, say it stuff just, that like that. That sucks so yeah. bad. Here's my thing is I think that reviews have done two things. They've taken away the incentive for people to like genuinely do good work in a lot of businesses, not ours, but mm. 
I think in a lot of businesses, people are just striving for that review. So it's like, what shortcuts can I take to get that five stars? Because really all it is is oh, five stars. Just click it. The second thing is I think that it's taken the heart and the chest out of people. If you got a bad review, say it to somebody. Why are you going on the internet and leaving a bad review? That's just my two cents. So that's that's good, actually. I, I like that. And I will say that that makes me even respect more what our team does because it is very rare that we ever just get somebody clicking a number of stars. We get freaking mini novels. Exactly. And they are literally pictures sharing their experiences, and- pictures. I mean, Google will get on your nerves if you follow us on Google because it is just nonstop like updates and stuff. It, it makes me really excited. But you're talking about how people just hit buttons and they don't have to like say anything. Yeah. So the review we got last night. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this junk. So I'm going to read it. I'm just going to read it straight up. Cause this is, I don't want to do it. A lack of justice. Um, holy crap. This was so funny. All right. So I'm going to read this just as it is. And I'll respond to it today. I think Jesus was stepping in last night when I was trying to respond to it. It was literally four or five times. I typed the thing out trying to post it and Google my business kept freezing up and kicking me out. I was like, all right, maybe I'm not supposed to say whatever I'm saying, but they said in 2017. So five years ago, five, five years ago, five years ago, probably close to 10,000 dogs ago. (laughs) I used off leash canine for advanced training, which is suspect in and of itself because I can think off the top of my head, maybe three or four clients that bypassed in our eight years of business that have bypassed basic obedience and done advanced. So this is already a little bit suspect to me. Let me also state they left no name, no name, just a, the letter a. So that's, you know, super cool. Also in 2017, I used off leash canine for advanced training. I missed some of my lessons because I travel for work. When I tried to reschedule online, I got an error message stating that there were not any trainers in my area. It's interesting. Actually, I don't think our stuff works that way. Is that correct, Katie? Does our stuff say there's no trainers in your area? Well, yeah, and we haven't, like, the only area we aren't in anymore is when we sold to somebody who was still in that area. Yeah. So anyway, and this is for Hampton Roads. So uh, this yeah, is speaking no. to that. And We've expanded Hampton Roads. We still here, baby. Yeah. Um, I emailed Josh to continue lessons and no response at all. Quick disclaimer, everybody thinks they email me. Those emails do not come to me, okay? And it half the crap doesn't have my name on it anymore. When you email info at, that ain't coming to my inbox. I mean, we it's a lot of email. I, it, it, it's not me keeping up with it. So anyway, they said they didn't get a response and whatever. I'd love to track it down. Blessing in disguise because my vet saw the e-collar on my dog. Her words to me were, quote, that collar does not need to be on your dog. She explained to me what it was, and the only time in a rare case it should be used for one day. I went home and threw the collar away. I had no idea it hurt my dog. I'm leaving a review years later because I saw someone with the same e-collar on their dog. I asked them where she got it. It was off-leash canine. Just like me, the owner had no idea it was a shot collar she was using. Do your research, people. Reward-based training works. And a shot collar is unnecessary, and for me, a total waste of money. Sincerely, A. My favorite, and of that, we can determine what A stands for. Well, my fa- my favorite of that is do your research. Yeah. So I would like a- agree. Of course. My favorite part is what a waste of money that I myself, with my actions, threw in the trash can. <laughs> you, right. It, it, Talk about waste of money, and then not going to your lessons. No it, big deal. Yeah, because with we our lessons, if you don't do them, you get refunded, right? Like you just get a so refund. So I looked, I clicked, I clicked her Google profile because I'm telling you, this is where it's at. Oh, so this is how you see. Of course, her only other review is another one star. Sure, like, for people, sure. Like, yeah. So anyway, though, the the couple funny things here, and this is just kind of a little PSA for for everybody out here. Um, you know, please, yes, I agree with A, as an Apple. Um, do your research. You should do your research. And that research should very much entail doing dog training tools, methodology, um, you know, consistency in in client experiences, recent client experiences. Are are you seeing all great things and they're 10 years old? Like, hey, there's probably an area of concern on, like, if you're thinking about sending your dog 
tomorrow. Um, so yes, do your research. For us, all of everything about us, everything is online on our websites and thousands of reviews from clients explaining the tools we use and how we use them and all those great things. The biggest area of concern for me in this though is the vet. And we run into this from time to time. I've mentioned it on here from time to time is the vet. The, the veterinarian who's not a dog trainer, but it's a veterinarian. That's like me telling the vet, hey, yo, you don't want to do that heart surgery on that dog that way. You want to use this tool. Hold on. I got this, uh, you know, DeWalt in the truck. Let me grab it real quick. We're going to use that instead of whatever high-tech tool you're going to use. It's better. The hell? I would never do that. I would never tell a vet how to operate on a dog. Vets love to tell people, though, how a dog should be trained. I'm like, let's stay in our lanes and provide the best opportunity for that dog to have a successful life. You keep them healthy. We're going to keep them obedient. We jive well together. But this person, this one I really love, and I'd love to know who this vet is, because this vet is an anti-e-collar. This vet is pro destroy a dog with a training tool in a way that it should never be used. I would literally knock somebody the f out if I ever saw him use a collar, how they use it, how she is saying to use it with a dog. So you got a vet telling him that tool is not be on your dog. If it is used, it should only be used for, for one day in a very specific case, lady or dude, you're an asshole. Like <laughs> that's crazy to me. And so if you'd like to actually learn about e-collars and how they're used and how we use them, you could spend about, I don't know, three years on YouTube watching us work with thousands of different dogs so it, it's and just that, ladies and gentlemen stay tuned for next week's episode where you'll see his response to this review <laughs> <laughs> no it, it won't turn into an episode I but i just it's just craziness and maybe i might respond and just say hey tune into the big dog podcast episode whatever that may be my response people, you know people are just insanely hypocritical because somebody who has not done their research really got their research from an offhand comment from a vet is now going onto the internet and telling other people to do their research. So to me, that's just an indication of like, you're dealing with a big game of telephone and right. then you're trusting the person at the end of it with a recommendation for someone who you treat as a family member. And the cool thing is, and I will tell them, hey, I would love to get your email address. If you can email us at info at joshwilson.dog, we'll pull up their stuff. And even, even as crazy as this is, because I feel bad because it, this is off, right? I'm going to refund them. We'll pull them up. We'll see how many lessons they didn't do in 2017. And we'll refund I don't them. I don't even know if I have the login for that <laughs> system anymore. No, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I respect the effort, though. Spinning the block five years later. Yeah, it's like, you know what? I could really use $83. Let me throw this out there and see what happens. The messed up thing is I'd have bought the e-collar back from them, too, even though it's an old model, probably three generations ago. Um, you know, but they threw in the trash, so we can't do anything about that. Anyway, that's the crazy-ass review from last night. And that's what happens when you get bad information. And to play off the bad information as we close, bad information is what you're mimicking when you try to imitate what you deem as successful businesses. Because again, you're imitating who they were or who that company was yesterday. Well, and to your point too, Josh, you have like these, most of the people that do this are, are not typically the people who actually are involved in every aspect of the business Correct. and can learn and grow with that or even have conversations to attempt to. So like, for instance, a lot of people will leave a company because they think they could do it better mm -hmm. or they want to do their own thing or whatever. all things I respect and appreciate. No big deal. Right. No big deal. However, it's the ones. So if you're listening and you're this one, this is you're, I'm talking to you where I'm like, don't be that person that criticizes the comp the current company with your with then goes to think you can do it better and does it the exact same Correct. way. Yes. And, and not think that you're different. Like there's no difference. Right. And we, there is no difference, but I assure you, we are not the same. We, yeah. Oh, <laughs> for sure. There's no difference. Like right. what you're doing yes. in, in attempting to do. So, so my encouragement to those people would be, how about this? How about stick with the company that you're with right now, whatever that is and have conversations yes. express future goals, desires, interests, maybe opportunities on how to learn and grow and partner or um, 
and maybe it's not. Maybe it's, hey, in three years, my desire is to do my own dog training business. Oh, yeah. I'm giving you a heads up now. However, I'd like to do it here. I'd like to do it this way. It is going to be a little bit different. Like, have an open conversation. This is never, like, there's been yeah. trainers have, have done this and you've worked with and yep. talked with and coached and helped and whatever. Because here's the thing. Like, we always say there's a shit ton of dogs out there for people to train. Like, yes. it is not an overly saturated business where there's no money to be made. However, right. There's also a massive value to be made in sticking with a company in their resources and their name and everything. Yeah. And the thing is, like, you know, regardless of the industry, and I think most, I don't know, I'd like to think most leaders feel this way. Um, I want to see good humans do well. Right. Whether that's with me or not, I want to see good humans do well, particularly in the in the in the dog industry. I want to see whether it's with me or doing their own thing or they go somewhere else to work. I want those good humans working with dogs and helping dogs, whether it's with us or somebody else. I want that. I want that. If you're not a good human though. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you deal with as few dogs as possible for whatever short period of time you try to make a living doing this because you're not a good human being. And that's not objective. Like you either are, or you aren't. Yeah, and, I just and think there's a lot, a lot of, people, of people in the dog industry, um, some of which have worked for us over the years, who are not great people, um, but there's way more out there who work with dogs, and they're just they're not good people. The dog's best interest is not the priority, and anybody who's a good human being, dog's best interest is their priority. I want to see them thrive with us or not. I want them to do well because they are helping to make more dogs better. And if they're not with us, I'd rather they be with them. Right. And they and them not doing well is going to ultimately hurt every dog. For instance, an, an example is a board and train. Yeah. A lot of people are concerned about sending their dog away for a board and train. I get that. It's a totally normal thing. However, people who have bad experiences with other people in a board and train or say um, you go to a, a, a board and train and something bad happens and it makes news and you hear about yeah. it. It makes you that person not want to do a born train anywhere. Yeah. But a born train is a great way to get your dog Absolutely. trained. Yep. And it just if if you're a dog trainer that's out there and doing awful things, you're making it hard for everybody else who are actually doing the right things. Yeah. So if you do want to do your own thing, hell yeah, do it. Like do it and do it really, really well. But do it in your own way that makes you unique. And maybe it's similar to somebody else. Who yeah. cares? But it's still like your thing. Or if you're with a company like I guess my final thoughts would be if you're with a company, take advantage of the opportunities that you have within the company, have conversations, look for um, ways to grow within the company or change your thought process. Recognize the resources you have, recognize the opportunities you have. Don't sure there's going to like a company of our size, there's going to be a lot of policies and procedures. Sure, yeah. Obviously that's to protect a lot of different things, but instead of being annoyed that you have to follow those policies and procedures and you know you don't want to have to report to somebody because a lot of people who go and do their own business they don't want to have to have a boss yep. change your mindset appreciate the policies and procedures yeah. for what they are and just do them because you know it's a good thing it might be annoying to have to for us as an example send a report card by 9 p.m so the client gets to see their dog before they go to bed sure yeah sure maybe it's like dang i'm so busy today and i got this event tonight and whatever and i got to get this report card in think about the bigger picture. Yep. And that's where I feel like a lot of people go wrong is they get it, they their mindset so messed up and they don't realize what they actually have. And and this is speaking to good companies. There are really shitty companies out there that it's oh, for good sure. for people to go out and do their own thing. Yeah. But I just think people should change their mindset and be more aware of all the little things and the big things of what the reality of the situation is yeah. where you're working. Yeah. So that was great, Katie. Thank you. And that, this was something I wanted your, your input in. And Jonathan, thanks for, for your ads. Um, you know, bottom line, guys, you know, do you. You will always have a greater chance of success in life, no matter what you do, if you do you. What makes you, particularly you're going out on your own, um, starting your own business, you, you are, for good or bad, like you are your business. You are the reputation of your business. It needs to be you. You will be unsatisfied and you will be unsuccessful if you're constantly trying to chase somebody else. Because somebody else that you're chasing, you will always be behind. I don't care. You're going to be behind. 
Because focus the, is in the, the wrong place. The focus is in the wrong place, and what you're chasing doesn't exist. It's a ghost. It's a ghost. They're gone. Well, and think about it this way: you're not in competition right. with any other business. You're like zero. Like I teach when I coached, I teach my kids. There's two things. There's a score sheet. I coach cheerleading, right? So there's a score sheet out of oh, 100. Score sheet. I thought you said a score sheet. No, I'm like, what is a, a score sheet? sheet. There's okay, a score, score sheet, sheet out of 100, right? Yes. That you have to get. You want to grasp every point that you possibly can and be your absolute best. Yep. But in, in my opinion, this is very different. A lot of cheerleading coaches don't coach this way. In my opinion, that's only 50%. The other 50% is knowing your competitors, yeah. what they do and how they do it, and educating your team and your coach to set yourself up well against your competitors yeah it's the same thing as watching film for football you practice to be your best yep. but you also set yourself up right against your competitors it's 50 50 that's so different in business right business is you do your business the way that you want to do it and you, you should strive to be your best yes. no matter what if you're constantly comparing yourself to others 100%. then you're just gonna it's so much spent time wasted now don't get me wrong I love a good gossip. I love a good like <laughs> investigate. Like, ooh, that person. Did, like, but everybody you does do. that. You do. Everybody yes. does that to a certain everybody extent. Everybody but me. You do a little bit. I don't think so. I think you do. Anyways, I just think when it comes to business, if you're focusing on other people, it's like that that meme, They're like the runners, where he's like looking back to see where his oh uh, Michael right Phelps swimming. Him. Or yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. too. It's like you're you know you got to keep your head in alignment with your body to glide yep. through the water better. You're messing yourself up. Yeah. You're going to mess yourself up if you're focusing on the others. The like market that. will always decide, you know, do you focus on you, what makes you unique and special, and, um, you know, you're doing your own thing, kudos to you. I respect it. Right. I'm excited for you. There's a time and a you. place to focus on others and be competitive. A hundred percent. Something like yeah. a team sport, whatever. There is not a time yeah. and a place for you, that. You business. just won't, you won't win in business. You have to control your mind, your day, what makes you unique, what, what solutions, what specific solutions you're bringing to the market. Because that's the whole point of it, guys. Like when you're in business, it, it can't be because you like to make, uh, you know, shaker bottle toppers and I'm going to make a better shaker bottle topper and it's the best shaker bottle top, you know, in the world. I'm going to start mass producing it. You won't sell a damn one of them if people don't have a problem with their current shaker bottle top, like you just won't your business has to be about filling, finding a, a need, providing the very best solution for that need and being unique and differentiating yourself. Imitation never gets you there. That's it. Do you, we love you. We're going to keep doing us and hope this helps somebody today. And if you're out there doing your own thing or preparing to do your own thing, I love you. I wish you the best of luck. It's hard as shit. Don't quit. Keep on going. Don't matter how many lumps you take because there's going to be lumps and most of them are going to be self-inflicted, but that's just part of the journey. You might chase the pretty parts that you see. This shit is filthy and it is ugly and it takes a lot. So and make one sure of the best advices I have to give from Josh himself is even when it's hard and nobody else is watching, you do the right thing anyways. 100% of the and time. And a lot of people don't do that, but those who do are the ones that ultimately be successful in whatever way they choose to be successful. That's right. Because no one's watching when you're alone. Right. Do the right things. We love you. Appreciate you. We'll see you next week.